No, thank you for whistling, but I don't want to look like Jimmy Savile out here on my first date. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> Not my first time. <laughs> Yes, mate. Yeah, right. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Guz Khan. In the news this week, after an all-night rave, one man is still so smashed, he almost sets off for work without his coat. <laughs> <laughs> after attempting a style overhaul with a few Giacomo purchases, one man is relieved when his new jacket gets a positive reaction from some neutral passers-by. <laughs> And as food bank usage reaches record levels in the run-up for Christmas, Number 10 devises a plan to make sure local school children get their fair share. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight, a broadcaster and journalist who recently cut the ribbon at the official opening of a new retirement home. Though she was a bit cross when they offered her a brochure on the way out. Please welcome <laughs> Janice Reporter. On Paul C tonight, a comedian who recently revealed that he once bought an ex-British army tank. Sounds quite fun. But on the downside, he actually outbid President Zelensky. Please welcome <laughs> Mr Ross Noble. <laughs> we start round one. Ian and Janet, have a look at this. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the hammer the wrong way. Yeah, it's uh, the Elgin marbles. The Parthenon sculptures. Yeah. That's the police looking for Lord Elgin, going to arrest him a bit late. <laughs> so that's Mitsotakis there, the Greek Prime Minister, who came over to have a meeting with Rishi Zunak, who then cancelled it and had a complete hissy fit. I mean, he's actually known as Techi Sunak now. Do you think he was trying to change his image and appear more macho? What, so go really hard on some ancient sculptures? <laughs> No, the government's trying to defend the fact that it's sort of really annoyed one of our allies for no reason at all. Mm. And it said um, he promised not to bring this up. And you think, have you ever met anyone Greek? <laughs> <laughs> they tend to bring this up very, very quickly. Do you want to see how the Greek media reacted to the snob? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah it. let's do it. <laughs> 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 But for those of us who don't speak Greek... <laughs> <laughs> this is Greece, the home of diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> Given that now you can do this uh, laser printing, why don't we just send the sculptures back and get new ones? We can make ones that look so much better without all the little bits out of them. <laughs> <laughs> then they can put up the emission charges at the British Museum and it's a win-win situation. It is, except it's free into the British Museum. <laughs> Special exhibitions you have to pay. The Elgin yeah. Marbles, that's a load of old ropey old Greek shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's how they publicise it. Yes, yeah. that's <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> but, Ian, you probably know, you can tell us what it means to Greek culture, the Parthenon uh, statues, rather than... Because they, they don't mean anything to us over here, really, do they? No, I mean, it's the frieze on the top of yeah. um, the Acropolis and the Parthenon is the one in the middle, and it was all one frieze. And Elgin went over there and said to the Ottoman Empire, can I have permission to... <coughs> Uh, take a few things. <laughs> uh, and then he just smashed it, took half of it home. And the idea that no one's ever minded, Byron at the time made a huge fuss. And Elgin was going to put the marbles in his garden. <laughs> the only reason the museum's got them is he went bankrupt and needed someone to buy them. Mm. I mean, that would have been a hell of a shed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's Elgin? He's down there. With the head yeah, missing. He's just, just <laughs> popping off like that. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the thing, you see, it was the Ottomans, wasn't it? You know. Good we... sofas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good sofas. <laughs> that's what they're going to want back next. They're going to yeah. want our little puffy seats. Yeah. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? 
This yeah. is all mad interesting, but I don't understand anything you guys have just said. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put it out there. I may not be a huge fan of Rishi, but this is historic. Possibly the first time ever that a European nation has had to beg a brown man for pieces of their heritage back. It's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the government that four days ago said, we're going to change the law over Rwanda... Yeah. ..so that we can ship people live over to Rwanda. <laughs> we can't ship some old figures back anywhere. That would be against the law. Well, why don't we just ship them to Rwanda and then let the Greeks <laughs> deal with them? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> The key question is, what did he say, the Greek, the Greek Prime Minister? Mitsotakis, he yes. said that um, it's like having the Mona Lisa and then cutting it in half. Absolutely. And in an interview, he said Britain having the algae marbles was like cutting the Mona Lisa in half and having the bits in different museums. To be honest with you, I think that might look cool. Do you want to, do you want to see what that might look like? Yeah. 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 If, if you cut them in half and put a mirror next to them, that's the Mona Lisa, that's what she looks <laughs> like. Let's try that with my brother Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hmm? Mr. Van Gogh, can we see what he's like? <laughs> just double pipe in it. There you go. So much better than the originals. Rishi didn't just stand the Greek Prime Minister up. He actively insulted him. He offered him a meeting with Oliver Dowden. <laughs> <laughs> Why else might Rishi Sunak be so vexed with the Greek Prime Minister? Oh, he met Keir Starmer first. Mm. Yeah. And Keir Starmer, amazingly, got through 30 minutes without being told, fuck you, Keir. <laughs> That's Greek again. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the House of Commons, it meant that Keir Starmer could do the Rishi's lost his marbles. Oh. <laughs> oh. What is the Labour Party's policy on returning the marbles? They're very much going to look into it. Yeah, I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same policy on everything. Yeah, work in progress. Yeah. Aren't they in favour of, like, a kind of permanent loan? Is that what they've been talking about? I don't about? think the Greeks want a loan very much, cos no. they say, you can't loan it to us cos it's ours. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we should give them six months, right? So <laughs> six months, and if you can steal them back, they're yours. <laughs> George Osborne is the chairman of the British Museum. What's his big idea for what to do with the Elgin marbles? Is he going to privatise them? <laughs> outsource them to the Cayman Islands? <laughs> And the ones that have got limbs missing, he's going to take the benefits of it. <laughs> 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 Technically, he wants to lend the marbles back to the Greek government for a period of time. In other news, what are the viewers of I'm a Celebrity getting annoyed about? Nigel Farage's fans feel that he's not getting enough airtime. Haven't we seen his bottom? I loved that. I mean, so from... How clever was that? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we saw his Elgin marbles the other day. <laughs> <laughs> a number of viewers have been complaining that Nigel Farage has been edited out of recent episodes by lefty ITV bosses. <laughs> yeah, you wait till you see the edit here. <laughs> <laughs> his lawyer sent a letter complaining that ITV broke its contract by giving viewers a glimpse of Nigel's naked asshole last week. <laughs> Well, if he'd signed a no-arsehole contract, he wouldn't have been able to go. <laughs> <laughs> Any lawyer will tell you that. Any lawyer will tell you that. Why is Farage's return to the limelight bad timing for the government? I think he thinks winning... What's it called? I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. I love the way you pretend you haven't watched it. You know, I... <laughs> I, was, I, I, mean, I was on it. Were you? 2004. Really? Do you think Ian actually watches <laughs> I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? Look, I know you don't do social media, yeah. but, Ian, it's been... in all. I don't do television, it's too <laughs> modern. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I know you were on it and I expect you were brilliant. Well, I was just in the jungle, pointing up with everybody, talking 24 hours a day, some singer from East 17 farting in my face every <laughs> 10 minutes, <laughs> and Paul Burrell, Diana's butler, pretending she was just normal like the rest of us. So that was my... <laughs> Two and a half weeks in the jungle. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> well, and you're complaining, everyone was talking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, anyway. I mean, the suggestions are that maybe he could do a calendar next year. Well, like Cliff <laughs> Richard. Yeah. yeah. yeah Cliff doesn't do a naked calendar, does he? No, no, but he's still doing a calendar. Yeah. And that in itself is a bit of a worry. <laughs> But it's his age, you know. He only does six months at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Immigration is becoming an even bigger issue in the Conservative yeah. Party. Figures on the right of the party are all wading in with their solutions. 
What are some of the ideas? The problem with migration is not the illegal migration, which is a tiny number, which is going down the boat. It's the huge amount of legal migration, which is largely financed by the fact that we don't have enough people to work in the industries that people want to have them, like care homes. Did you see who else we've got a shortage of, apparently? Graphic designers. <laughs> have you seen the show? <laughs> 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 it turns out Robert Jenrick wants an Australian-style cap. Is that one of these? <laughs> yeah. yeah <that's> right. Right. <laughs> what about Lee Anderson? What was his idea for reducing immigration into the UK? Set fire to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, he suggested asylum seekers should be sent to the Orkneys. Oh, mm. oh, yeah. Which, I don't know if you know, big man, is still in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> What did Lee Anderson reveal recently? He claimed he'd been offered a lot of money to defect respect. Defect is it reform? Respect. Reform, is it reform, is it called? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. the tie slot. That's right, yeah. He was speaking at one of his road shows called Lagers with Lee. Oh. We missed out on that one. It's not exactly female friendly. Women are allowed to drink lager now, though. <laughs> According to The Sun, a spokesman said last week that Lee Anderson is a plank. <laughs> in his defence, he might be a plank, but he did ask quite a good question in the Select Committee about immigration. How many people travelling on small boats that's been refused asylum have been sent to a third country or back to their own country over the past three years? I don't think we have. I, don't, I, don't, I think we'll, we'll, we'll write to the committee with those numbers, Mr Anderson. Do we have any figures about anything? <laughs> How many were sent back last month? Have you got... Incoming. <laughs> to be honest, we're just ordering lunch now, so... <laughs> <laughs> he knew when he flicked those papers, there was no shit written in those papers. <laughs> I love the way he did that, where he just panicked and he went, uh, incoming. Yeah. And I just think, I'm going to use that with my wife. Like, literally, when she goes, why haven't you put the bins out? I'll go, incoming. <laughs> and then just there for a bit. <laughs> this week, James Cleverly has been talking about Rwanda again, yeah. but apparently he doesn't think it's all that, even though, according to The Independent, Germany and Austria are waiting to see what happens with Britain's plans for Rwanda. Oh, yes, he described our plans as batshit. Batshit yeah. crazy. Germany and Austria. Nothing to worry about there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, do you want to see two posh white uncles kicking off? Yes. It was all going down at the COVID inquiry when Michael Gove and Keith the barrister were having a go at each other. It was like mixed martial arts. Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland receive funding more generous per capita than England. And on top of that, it is also the case M Mr. that... Mr Gove... No, 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 um, let no, me no, finish. No, 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 Mr Gove... I know, I think it is Mr. important. No, Mr. I think Gove. it is critically important that Mr. I make this Gove. point. That furlough... No, 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 was Mr. 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 Gove, I ask just, the questions here, yeah, please. Just, just please, just pause. I, I note, uh, Mr Keith, that you want us to keep our answers brief, but if it's also the case that you want them to be answered effectively, then I'll have to go on at some length. <laughs> Mr Gove, like what a... What a us here, Mr Keith. I've um, heard some interorum threats in my time, but that, that I'm afraid, to take the business. Mr Keith, is there a different way to ask Yes. Um, I'm, I'm getting was I, would, I would say it was a promise, not a threat. <laughs> I think we can all admit that's the most violent thing we've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the diplomatic row over the Elgin Marbles, where Rishi Sunak snubbed the Greek PM before he returned to Athens. The Greeks have accused Rishi of playing politics to win votes. That's an offensive and outrageous accusation, because Rishi Sunak has consistently demonstrated that he has absolutely no intention <laughs> of ever winning an election. <laughs> As the diplomatic round unfolded, the mail said the Greek Prime Minister was in high dudgeon. Is that near Watford? <laughs> <laughs> so that gig there, that is a shithole. <laughs> yeah. Although he didn't meet Rishi Sunak, the Greek Prime Minister did have a discussion about the Elgin Marbles with Sakir Starmer. And after 45 minutes, he said, you know what, just keep them, mate, I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Ross, take a look at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's writing another book. Oh, look, uh, that's what Harry's got us over. 
unless somebody surprised at the contents <laughs> and wondering why they're reading it in a field surrounded by windmills. Um, yes, it's Prince Harry. There's a new book about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has been written, and uh, there's some controversy because it talks about uh, some members of the royal family asking Meghan what colour the, her baby might be. Yeah, this is the news that the royal family bicker, fight, and don't like spending time together, something we can all finally relate to. Um, <laughs> well, what the big problem with Omid Scobie's book is, apart from the picture of his annoying face on the back cover, is that Scobie is a friend <laughs> and ally. That's quite tough. <laughs> I don't know the brother, so if he wants to fight, he's going to have to find me in Coventry. So, uh, <laughs> Scobie is a friend and ally of Meghan and Harry, so as one critic wrote, it's quite one-sided, <laughs> especially Chapter 7, where Kate cuts down the sycamore gap tree. <laughs> <laughs> Who might be angry with Scobie about the book? The rest of the royal family, I suppose. Yeah. Prince Charles. Oh, sorry, King Charles. King Charles. I'm a Spaniel, Spaniel. Have you, King have Charles. You, <laughs> King Charles. Are you behind on the crown? I'm in behind. Have you not got to that bit. That's <laughs> I haven't watched yeah. the crown, I'm afraid. Oh, no, yeah. I don't bother. Well, with that. spoiler alert, she dies at the end. <laughs> <laughs> His publishers are quite annoyed because they've had to pulp all yeah. the Dutch translation. They accidentally, on purpose, to boost PR for the book, included the name of the royal who speculated on Archie's skin tone. There, there, was there two, are two names. There was two names. And two members of the royal family. They appear in the Dutch translation. Oh, what would their initials be, then? Um... H-R-H. -H. Well, they've already been... <laughs> uh, they've already been named by Piers Morgan. But yeah. Piers named them on talk TV, so no-one still knows who they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like keeping it to himself, isn't it? <laughs> You're right to mention Piers Morgan. He was the one that was absolutely furious, saying that Omid Scobie was a Weasley lickspittal making a living from peddling garbage <laughs> about the royals. <laughs> and we all know... That's Piers' job. The thing about Slimy Scobie is that... Is that his real name? No, it's <laughs> my... All right, Omid Scobie has a, a strangely airbrushed appearance. Can we have a look at the face of, the, of this smooth automaton? <laughs> yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need a close-up. Can, can, can we zoom in? On the face. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we... Oh, we haven't got the technology for that. We're just going to have to get nearer to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> The Daily Mail also criticises the book for depicting the royals as pantomime villains, although with Andrew, it's always helpful to hear someone shout, he's behind you. <laughs> Chris Rock, the American comedian, said he's mixed race, and he said that in our families, everybody always discusses this. Both yeah. sets of in-laws say, how dark is it going to be, how light is it going to be, yeah. this is what happens. So even the revelation, and it was on opera as well. Oprah. Uh, Oprah. <laughs> Her career's only over when the fat lady sings. <laughs> what else did Scobie accuse William and Kate of? Being next in line to the throne. <laughs> <laughs> he says they manipulated the press to attack Harry and Meghan, later accusing William and Kate of showy stunts. <laughs> Another lazy misprint. <laughs> <laughs> what other controversial royal is set to return to the BBC? Prince Philip. <laughs> <laughs> On Gardner's question time, yeah. he's going to crawl. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is the ghost of Prince Philip going to be the new host of Top Gear? Because <laughs> 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 he was crashing cars all the time, wasn't he? <laughs> So that Damien Lewis is reprising his role as Henry VIII in a BBC adaptation of Wolf Hall. Ah. Although, as the Mail pointed out, Claire Foy, who played Anne Boleyn, will not be back following her character's <laughs> beheading. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> serious. <laughs> oh, that could have been a brilliant ventriloquist act. Yeah, they could have had the thing <laughs> under there. Where is he? He's in the castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What gets Camilla's eyes rolling? Ten pence on a packet of fags. <laughs> <laughs> um... According to Scobie, Camilla rolls her eyes when anyone brings up topics like gender identity, unconscious racial bias, veganism, gluten-free and dairy-free <laughs> options. <laughs> Ironically, she seems to have quite an intolerance. <laughs> <laughs> OK, where did Big King Charles pop up this week? Oh, at the cop. 
He flew to the UAE for COP28 climate change conference where he opened the summit because Pitbull was busy. Um, King Charles <laughs> is concerned about how hot the planet is getting as some members of the royal family are worried it could lead to Prince Harry's children getting substantially darker. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so who's not been impressed with Rishi Sunak... Me! Green... <laughs> <laughs> I've not been impressed at all. <laughs> with his green credentials? Yeah, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs a coherent green policy when you can just make videos like this? Right now, something very exciting is happening in the sky above us. It all started with a government competition to support the industry to achieve the first net-zero transatlantic flight on an aircraft using 100% sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. Our government made up to a million pounds of funding available to support the project, and right now, it's taking off. Oh, it's an unfortunate image, because it looks like the plane's dropping a bomb on him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the book Endgame, written by royal expert Omid Scobie. One revelation from the book is that Prince Edward is a germaphobe. Which is awkward, as that's where most of his family comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Omid Scobie started out at American celebrity magazine Us Weekly before moving to work for Meghan on Me, Me, Me Daily. <laughs> <laughs> so to round two, the jigsaw of news. Oh. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. Here's your first one. Buzz in if you know the answer. Well, it's either people are up in arms about potholes or they don't like bald men pointing at them. <laughs> uh, I think it's about potholes. Yeah. More and more potholes are appearing and uh, the people are very angry about it. You can see he's very angry about it. <laughs> so potholes, potholes, potholes. No, no, absolutely. This is the big news that potholes are yeah. becoming an even bigger problem. According to the AA, October saw a record number of breakdowns caused by potholes. As a result, what advice have the AA given to any drivers worried about potholes? Avoid them. <laughs> Drive slowly around them. This is boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, is it? Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> is, is it? Yeah. Peer oh. that bald man to sit on the front of your car yeah. and point at them as yeah. he sees them. <laughs> There's one! Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Buy a bald man. He's called Paul. Paul. Paul the pointing pothole. Practitioner. That's what he's called. <laughs> uh, listen, I wish it was Paul, but the AA have advised that drivers should avoid driving over puddles. OK, unfortunately, puddles is a local clown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And every time he gets driven over... Ha, ha. <laughs> You know what? I think the A should they should get back to roads. Stop talking about clown homicide. <laughs> <laughs> they should stick to helping people to give up alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> it's some exciting news. Uh, back to the roads. Well, earlier this month, Rishi Sunak pledged an extra eight point three billion pounds to tackle the scourge of potholes. He then put out this accompanying tweet. My God. Oh. oh, if you're in a hole, keep digging, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, that brother on the far right ain't getting no holes. I tell you that right no. now. <laughs> <laughs> Who could the government turn to to help them fill the potholes? Peter Andre. <laughs> they could use a newly unveiled pothole robot. Wow. That looks like a roll of carpet on the back. Yeah. Uh, it, that's, it, what, that's the plan. They're going to carpet Britain. <laughs> <laughs> what was GB's news reaction to the advice of avoiding puddles? Is it this? Oh, are we, are we on air? <laughs> anyone watching? <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. It's PC gone mad. You can't even, can't even smash up a car. And all the cars are foreign. <laughs> 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 on the subject of GB News, who is set to join their hallowed lineup? Any guesses? Boris Johnson is. Is it Suella Braverman? No, it's more exciting than that. It's uh, the news hound and journalistic heavyweight, Peter Andre. <laughs> Good Lord. You see, that's the thing. Peter Andre has only been booked because they're so obsessed with trans issues and they know that he sings about a mysterious girl. <laughs> Back on the road. Sorry, sorry, we can't just skate over this. Peter Andre <laughs> is joining... <laughs> Peter Andre <laughs> is joining GB News. He said that he's going to help discuss his own issues with mental health. Wow. But why is he on GB News, then? <laughs> They don't want that. They say, pull What's... your socks up, you bloody flaky libtard. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a bit worried that that's going to go up against loose women? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my 
God. Are, are, you are you suggesting that Peter Andre goes up against loose women? <laughs> <laughs> This is Britain's pothole crisis. Thank God that's finished. To address <laughs> the issue of potholes, Rishi Sunak took to social media with this. It may look rubbish, but some special advisor is going to end up in the House of Lords for that. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's your next one. Is that Canadian, the Canadian super pig? Yeah, this is the news that America is under threat from a new breed of super pigs. But what yeah. makes them super pigs? They can the... fly, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you don't know that it's a super pig because normally they just wear glasses. <laughs> and then you go, oh, it's just a regular pig, and then he takes it off. And you're, oh, my God, it's super pig! <laughs> um, yeah, they're highly intelligent, aren't they? They're madly super pigs. This is a bit worrying that this is the only bit of news I know. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that through the paper, boring, boring. Super pig? <laughs> yeah, they, they um, live in pigloos where they burrow into... Yeah, I swear this is true. They <laughs> make... It's not that it's true, it's just that you know it. Yeah, 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 yeah but... Is a pigloo made of ice or made of mud or what? Well, it's made of ice, but they're getting smarter, so they're going to make them out of straw, then wood, <laughs> then brick. <laughs> And that's how smart they are. They're domesticated pigs that have bred with wild ones, creating feral hogs that can weigh up to 150 stone. <gasps> how do you stop a super pig? You can't stop a super pig. Bro, there is one last hope. Experts are using net guns fired from helicopters. <laughs> Failing that, if you can guide them into an American high school, there's a 50% chance they'll get shot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, just, sorry, there's somebody in my ear saying this isn't a real story. <laughs> 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 and why does Novel know so much about it? <laughs> I never had one of the earpieces in before. Yeah. It's like intrusive thoughts, but like that are happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really hard when you're talking and they're talking. Yeah, it's proper, like, it's, it's really weird. Like, it's all quite sensible stuff, but if somebody said, pull your dick out, I'd pull my dick out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> always, always good to get the excuses in early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Janet, what pig-based culinary crime did Marks and Spencers commit this week? Oh, God, it's fantastic. A paella croquetta. Yeah. Do we have to provide our own pictures? <laughs> 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 Wow. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, look. I wouldn't have known that unless I put it there. Needs cooking. Look. <laughs> Master Deli. Yes, he was an apprentice. Was he? <laughs> I mean, the problem that Marks and Spencers have got now is they used to sell Percy pigs, but now they've got these Canadian Percy pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and then... This is the new breed of super pig invading the US from Canada. There's been a lot of stories about the trouble caused by super pigs, but let's show a little respect. The correct term is detective superintendent. <laughs> 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 One news report describes the animal as a 120 stone pig with a voracious sexual appetite taking over America. <laughs> it was bad enough when you got in last time. <laughs> And finally, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's your last one. Is it a Christmas present? It is a Christmas present. This is the news that three quarters of British people say they've been given a Christmas present or gift that they hate. How incredibly ungrateful of them. <laughs> <laughs> any, any guesses what those worst Christmas presents might be? People don't like jumpers, do they? They do if they're cool. <laughs> I once wanted a mountain bike for Christmas, and you know what my mum and dad got me instead? A notice board. <laughs> That's right. You can put a sign in it saying, wanted mountain bike. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just to incentivise this, there's, there's a point for everyone you get right. Oh, nuclear um, waste yes. disposal unit. Is it the arsehole of Cliff Richard Calendar? <laughs> Peter Andre, <laughs> 20 political moments that changed my life. <laughs> 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 Discount vouchers that have expired. Yes, so that oh, is brilliant. top of the list. What's the worst Christmas present you've ever received? What's the worst? Go on. Oh, my mother 
gave me a very heavy box when I was going to the Nevis in the Caribbean for Christmas. She said, be sure to take it. It's a very special present. You've got to open it on Christmas Day. <sighs> Put it in my suitcase. Got there Christmas Day, opened it, cut glass grapefruit bowl. <laughs> Speaking of messing with the giving season, Nigella Lawson suggested that families ditch Christmas cake in favour of a chocolate cake. But how does Nigella eat hers? Very slowly and sultrily. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm just going to put it in my mouth. But, oh, I'm just going to go, come on, Nigella, calm down. <laughs> Chuck a bucket of water over yourself, for me. <laughs> you seem to have studied it pretty closely. <laughs> Nigella told the Sunday Times, I love a slice of dense, damp Christmas cake. <laughs> oh, you see? Especially when eaten with a slice of strong, sharp yeah. cheese. Oh, yeah. Nigella also said she hates wrapping gifts because she gets all her hair stuck in a sellotape. What's that like, Ross? Did you, you know? Well, it's a nightmare, cos when I go to use the sellotape and there's Nigella stuck. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <That's> out. <laughs> and she's like... She's like, oh, I'm stuck here. <laughs> oh. Get out. Get out. How have animal rights group PETA tried to save some festive cheer? Oh, did they, they stole the turkeys? They, they stole a bunch of turkeys, kidnapped the turkeys, released the turkeys? Was it turkey-based? <laughs> turkey-based, come on. <laughs> Um, they're encouraging people to go vegetarian this Christmas with a Yuletide cartoon. Let's have a look. Oh. oh. I right. can see where they put the carrots. <laughs> <laughs> a post got fact-checked on Twitter with the comment, turkeys are not vegetarians. Turkeys eat just about anything they can fit in their mouth. If turkeys were larger or had the technological means to farm and eat humans, they likely would. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Which means that at the end of this round, it's Ian and Janet with four points and Paul and Ross with four points. Mm. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Only one between you this week. Your four are Queen Camilla, Keir Starmer, Dante's Beatrice and Jack Grealish. <laughs> Uh, you look surprised by your own buzzer. <laughs> um, Beatrice is dead. <laughs> you might have broken it a little more gently to us. <laughs> you could have said Beatrice isn't very well. <laughs> it could be a while. I mean, and the others aren't. Is that the is worst the... answer to that question we've ever had? <laughs> One of them's dead and the rest of them aren't. <laughs> OK, what about they all inspired great poets? Yes. She inspired Dante, Camilla inspired... King Charles to write a new series of verses. Of King... <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something about Jack Grealish in a poem. Is there? Yeah. Um, Who does he play for? Uh, he's Manchester City Please. currently, Your Honour. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> something to do with writing. <laughs> OK, uh, Camilla has sponsored a, a poetry competition. Yes. But what has Keir Starmer got to do with poetry? He's poetry in motion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close, like I said. There was a man called Starmer who claimed to be a farmer. When it came to the crops, he was the tops, he couldn't have been much calmer. <laughs> <laughs> no good, but it rhymes. They've all inspired people to write books, except Camilla, who has inspired people to read them. What uh -huh. has Camilla been doing to encourage people to read? Has she been throwing copies of Harry's book out of cars? <laughs> <laughs> We well, were speaking at a Booker Prize event. Novelist Sir Ben Ockrey said Camilla makes reading sexy. Ahead of the actual presentation ceremony, she was asked to look after the trophy. Here's a picture of her with it. It looks like it's got some weight to it. I wouldn't let her near Omid Scobie with that thing. <laughs> Dante's... Why has she, she got a staircase with a lion sitting on the toilet? <laughs> 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 what book? Did Keir Starmer reportedly inspire? Oh, Bridget Jones. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, it yeah, was. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's Helen Fielding's novel, yeah. Bridget Jones's Diary. It's long been hinted that the character Mark Darcy, a human rights lawyer, is modelled on the Labour leader. This summer, Starmer long addressed... Long been the... hinted by Keir <laughs> Starmer. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I've only seen the movie, I haven't read the book, but every two minutes, 
each page finishes with, my father was a toolmaker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this what summer... do you think about Bridget? Well, I quite like her, but not if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Take too firm a stance on this one. That's right. This summer, Starmer addressed the rumour saying, the honest answer is, I don't know. Sorry, that was actually his response when he was asked if he had an opinion on anything. <laughs> <laughs> Who's been fueling the rumours that Starmer really is the inspiration for Bridget Jones's love interest? It's the Labour Party. It is, it is. It's a specific member of the Labour Party. Uh, the Labour deputy leader, Angela Rayner, revealed in an interview with Vogue that she has Keir Starmer saved in her phone as Mr Darcy. As opposed to Farage, as Mr Arcy. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, here's my question to you. Is Keir Starmer sexy? No. <laughs> what about when you see these photos? It's going to change your mind. Let's have a look. Yeah. There we go. Is that a hostage video? <laughs> is that... <laughs> And is that shaft of light coming in through the window or shining out of his ass? That's the question. <laughs> Who did England footballer Jack Grealish inspire to write a book? Uh, Milton. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the queen of the bonk buster, Jilly Cooper. She says that Grealish is like a character from my books. Wait, 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 so, so she did write The Hobbit. <laughs> what sign do we have that Jack Grealish might not be an avid reader? He's a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by his response to this reporter, I think Jack could do with joining a book club. Dean Smith also says you're an encyclopedia of football. Where, where does that come from? A what? An encyclopedia <laughs> of football. I don't know what that means. Dante's Beatrice. Ian, would you would you like to help us out here? Like, what... uh, Beatrice, he, Dante was in love with Beatrice and she died. But her ghost came back, rather like the crown, <laughs> and guided him through the circles of hell, through the underworld, accompanied by another poet, Virgil. It's that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he fancied her so much that he wrote a book about her and she also appears in his medieval epic, The Divine Comedy. So it's a fitting tribute that we're mentioning her here in the same breath as Jack Grealish. <laughs> They've all inspired people to write books, except Camilla, who has inspired people to read them. So Keir Starmer has revealed that when he first met his wife, she told friends afterwards, who the fuck does he think he is? <laughs> and 16 years later, everyone's still waiting to find out. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Pirate Plunder. <laughs> the magazine for the pirate brethren of the British Isles. If you sense that someone's reading it over your shoulder, that'll be your parrot. <laughs> we start with... In 1943, the editor of the Pirate Plunder, Captain Davy, slipped his moorings and what? Sailed off into the sunset. Jenny, you're almost there. Sailed down the canal to begin his voyage on the great sea oh. of life. Do canals traditionally run into the sea? Is there a lot of piracy on canals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Teddington Dock. <laughs> yeah. oh, give me your treasure. Go! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, next, Bristol Airport criticised for what? Criticised for its terrible church in the car park. Yeah, I'm going to give you that, broski. So, Bristol Airport has been criticised for installing a multi-faith area in a bus shelter. Let's have a look. <laughs> no! Oh. What are the bollards for? To stop you thinking it's a drive through <laughs> It's nothing worse when I'm having a bit of a prayer. <laughs> oh. Passes the window, says I'm two Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, just a yeah. vicar with a thing on like that. What well, can I get for you? <laughs> can I get for you? Dri drive by confessional. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of wanking! <laughs> How brilliant is it that people of all faiths now have somewhere they can pray that their car isn't broken into <laughs> while they're away on holiday? <laughs> I spoke to somebody that worked at Heathrow, and apparently the multi-faith prayer room is a hotbed of filth. <laughs> That's where people sneak away to um, shout, Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Lift off. Yes. <laughs> well, next, the moon has more what than Yorkshire? Uh, Anyone says atmosphere, and I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> I think I know this. Go on. Is it a uh, phone signal? It is, bro. Oh, apparently. Apparently, no. the, moon, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, 
apparently the moon has more reliable mobile phone signal <laughs> than Yorkshire. It's not just mobile phones. Thanks to Rishi, the moon's got better transport links too. <laughs> uh, next, to fill out the issue of pirate plunder, we had to steal material from other magazines. <laughs> yeah. uh, to fill out this issue of pirate plunder, we had to include a picture of a pirate ship that we had from the last issue. <laughs> oh, take a look at that. There you go. Repeating material. Yeah. Honestly, what sort of magazine are they? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very low-flying cloud. <laughs> Next, Aldi creates the longest what? Is it orgasm? <laughs> it's got something to do with them super pigs from earlier. Oh, pigs oh. in a blanket. There you go. Oh. OK, so pig in a blanket. It's 20 feet long, and here it is. It looks like the Rosetta Stone. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they could put that in the British Museum. <laughs> yeah, I'll send the marbles back. It could be a giant beer mat, couldn't it? <laughs> I think he's got a tip worm. <laughs> <laughs> Next, if you want to see a parrot in a waistcoat, what? Take magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Watch snooker in the ear teeth. Yes, yeah. John Parrot. John Parrot. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. Very yeah. good. That's good. If but... you want to see a parrot in a waistcoat, come to Parrot Waistcoat World, just off the <laughs> M25 near High Wickham. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you want to see a parrot in a waistcoat, head to the Swanage Pirate Festival. This is an article from Pirate Plunder magazine, <laughs> and here is a parrot in a waistcoat. <laughs> there he is. Mm. I would say that was more of a gilet. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, woman mistakes husband's pants for what? <laughs> ghost of Anne Boleyn. <laughs> it's got to be a ghost, isn't it? No, uh, woman mistakes husband's pants for a burglar coming up the stairs. <laughs> How? <laughs> oh, we're about to find out. <laughs> this is a woman in West Sussex who mistook a shadow for a burglar. Here are his pants. There you go. Yeah. And here is the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> No. I mean, it's a bit burglary. No. It's a bit burglary. I mean, no, unless you're going to be... both think you're being burgled by a miniature Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Janet have six. Oh, for Paul seven. and Ross have eight. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Loose Women Christmas Party. <laughs> <laughs> Is it um, Bishop Complains About Unfair Identity Parade? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Another terrible edition of Hide That Camel. <laughs> <laughs> There's one bonus one. Woman Complains About Unfairness of Identity Parade. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? The best episode ever of Hide That Camel. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Janet Street Porter, Paul Merton and Ross Noble, and I leave you with the news. Now, in California, on a visit to a fertility clinic, Prince Harry is accused of having a rather cavalier attitude to some precious IVF samples. <laughs> <laughs> In Downing Street, Rishi Sunak watches his wife's accountants put the finishing touches on her tax return. <laughs> <laughs> and there's joy all around amongst care home staff as one resident manages to colour in a picture without going over the lines. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>